Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. Today we're going to look at formulas that you may see in your algebra book or you may see them actually in a physics book. When you work with a formula you will have several variables. Some of the formulas that you may already have seen are area formula. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So we have two variables length and width. We multiply those together and we find the area of the rectangle. Some of you may have already studied the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is the hypotenuse and well C is the hypotenuse. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. A and B are the two sides of the triangle that make the right angle. Now we're not going to use those two formulas today but you can see that formulas can have three variables and or more and you will be given some of the information we will replace these with numbers. Sometimes you are given um, the length and the width and you would multiply those together. Other times you may be given the area and the length and to find that you would have to divide to find the width. The two problems that I'm going to work for you today are already written here on the screen. It uses the letter S and the letter T. Now it uses the letter T twice. It uses the letter V also. We call these variables. The S in this problem stands for distance. We are dropping an object and we are seeing how long it will fall. So this is the distance that the object is going to fall. The T stands for time. Now T is time in both places. So in this T, I will square it, but this T will not be squared. And this is the time that the ball is falling. The V that you see stands for velocity, but a lot of times people will call that their speed. I'm going to write speed, but it really is velocity if you study physics. Now in this problem, we're going to be finding V. If we're going to find V, then that means they are going to tell us the numbers that we will use for the other variables. In this problem, they are telling us that S is 80 feet. So the object has fallen 80 feet. Now even if you don't know physics and you have no idea what I'm talking about as far as the objects, that's okay. The only thing you really have to know here is the formula they've already given it to us that will be written in the word problem for you and then you just look for the numbers. You will look and you will see the word 80 feet. That will be our S. You will also look and they will give you another number and it will be your time. And for this problem they have given us two seconds. So write your formula down. S equals 16 t squared plus v times t. Now I'm going to replace the variables that I know with their number. S is 80, so I will put 80 equals 16. t is 2, so I will put a 2 in parenthesis and square it plus, now the v I do not know, so that stays a v. The T again is 2, so I'll put another 2. Now that does look a little funny. It would be quite alright if you wrote that as 2V. 80 equals 16 times 4 is uh, 64 plus 2V. Now this is a simple algebra equation that you should be able to solve. If you do not know how to solve that, then you Possibly this is this lesson is too hard for you then. You'll need to go back another back a different chapter in your book. It's called equations, solving equations. Alright, if you know how, you would know that we would subtract 64 here from both sides. We always do the same thing on both sides. I'm trying to solve for the V, so see the V is going to be here on the right side. 2V equals, and that will be 16. Well, if 2V equals 16, you know the next step is to divide, and we will get 8. 
Now that's the velocity. They asked us to find V or the speed. So your answer is 8 and this was feet per second. The ball was falling at 8 feet per second. And now again, the point that you need to know is how to put the numbers in and then do the math. We actually used the order of operations when I did this part to find the 64. 2 squared, you know we always do exponents first, and then we multiply. So 4 times 16 was 64. The next thing we had to remember was how to solve an algebra equation. Alright, let's look at the problem over here on the right. Now we have three variables. This V is not the same V we had over there. This V stands for value. It's a money. It's the value of a car or a boat. And C is cost. It's the cost of the car or the boat. The 6,000 is a number that we know and then T, now that is time. Time that you've used your car or your boat. Alright, in this problem we're going to find T. If we're going to find T, that means we have to read the problem and find the V and the C. In this problem they told me that the cost, which is our C, is 50,000. 50,000. I guess that was a rather expensive car or boat you just bought. Alright, and they also told me that the value of the car or boat is 38,000. So see, when you buy a car or boat, their value goes down. The value of the car or the boat that you bought now is 38,000. It started out at 50,000. But again, now, even if you do not understand the story, you have the formula, and you're going to write the formula and put the numbers in. So you just have to be able to read the problem and find these numbers and put them in their proper place. Alright, we were given the cost and the value, so I'm going to write those. The value is V, it's 38,000. The cost was 50,000. Minus the 6,000 T. And there's the variable that we don't know. You see, each time, no matter how many variables are in the formula, they're going to tell you all but one. Now later on you will study some formulas where you will not be given two variables, but we're studying those that where they are going to give you all the numbers that you need except for one variable. This problem we don't know T. So again, we're ready to do algebra. We didn't even have to use the order of operations for this problem. We need to move the 50,000 to the left. I'm going to subtract 50,000 from each side. Now again, if this part is too hard for you, then you really need to go back and study solving equations. This is a negative 12,000 equals a negative 6,000 T. In order to solve for the T, the T is being multiplied by negative 6,000. In order to solve, we want to finish with one T. We have to divide. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we divide by a negative 6,000 here. A negative 6,000 divided by a negative 6,000 is 1. So that lets us finish with one T. We are always wanting to solve for what one variable is. We don't always write the one, but I want you to see it it is important to know that's 1t. And of course I have to divide this side also. If you, Whatever you do on one side you must do the same thing on the other. So we get what 2. So this was years. So time is 2 years. Sorry I don't have room quite to write it. Well I hope that helps you a little bit on solving formulas. Now again you do have to have prior knowledge of how to solve uh, an algebra equation and the order of operations.